Ladies and gentlemen, Google DeepMind has a new presentation for the world of AI. And it's not RoboCop just yet, but it's arguably the next best thing, RoboCat. And no, it's not a robotic cat that runs around policing its local furry friends, but it's still impressive. Why? Because RoboCat is a self-improving AI, and it's what's gonna make that useful robot from the Jetsons a reality. So it's not RoboCop, but it's sure as heck laying the foundation for independent robots of the future. And we're gonna learn about what makes it work on this episode of AI Focus. And stay till the end to learn about Google's other robotic project, Barkour. That's equally as awesome, if not more. We have a lot to get into, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Robots that are programmed for specific tasks are already a part of certain areas of our lives, and they're pretty useful but the general purpose robot has yet to be realized. This is because it takes a long time to train a general purpose robot on real world training data. This is what has led to the new paper and research by Google DeepMind that introduces RoboCat. It's a self-improving AI agent that learns a variety of tasks across multiple robot arms, then generates self-training data to improve its technique. This may sound a lot like Google's other robot, Palm E. Palm E uses the Palm language model to understand tasks and complete them. It can learn to multitask at scale and can even continue tasks if distracted. It's probably the most impressive robot I've ever seen, but RoboCat accomplishes tasks across different physical robots. It also learns much faster than any other state-of-the-art models and can pick up a new task in as few as 100 demonstrations. This is attributed to its large, diverse dataset. This capability will, according to DeepMind, accelerate robotics research, reduce the need for human supervised training, and is an important step for creating a general purpose robot. So how does RoboCat actually improve itself? Well, first you should know that RoboCat is based on Gato, which is Spanish for cat, which I'm sure you already knew. It's DeepMind's multimodal model that can process language, images, and actions in physical and simulated environments. Gato's architecture was combined with a huge training dataset of sequences of images and actions of robot arms completing hundreds of tasks. After this round of training, it was time to start RoboCat on a self-improving training path with a set of unseen tasks. The learning of each task followed five steps. First, they collected 100 to 1,000 demonstrations of a robotic arm doing a new task. Second, they fine-tuned RoboCat on this new specific task or arm, creating a spin-off agent, like how the Jeffersons was a spin-off of All in the Family. Then Mr. Jefferson, I mean, the spin-off agent practices on this new task 10,000 times, creating new training data. Next, the demonstration data and the self-generated data are stored in RoboCat's dataset. Then fifth, a new version of RoboCat is trained on the new training dataset. This means the latest version of RoboCat is based on a dataset of millions of trajectories from robot arms including self-generated data. Researchers used four different types of robots and many different arms to collect the vision-based data representing the tasks RoboCat would be trained to perform. These graphics show examples of the training data. The first shows a real robot picking up gears. The second shows a simulated robot stacking blocks. And the third is a self-generated piece of data showing RoboCat pick up a cucumber. And this is where it gets cool. The new training data allowed RoboCat to learn to control different types of robot arms within hours. It was originally trained on arms with two-pronged grippers, but adapted to arms with three-fingered grippers and twice as many controllable outputs. Yes, RoboCat taught itself how to control different types of robot arms itself. Here we demonstrate RoboCat lifting fruit with the panda robots which is a task RoboCat has seen during training. It is worth pointing out that the Sawyers and the Pandas have different action specifications, making this an impressive example of cross embodiment transfer. Out of all the AI advancements, this one feels like the most dystopian robot movie one yet. After observing 1,000 human controlled demonstrations, RoboCat could move its arm well enough to pick up gears successfully 86% of the time. Within this same amount of demonstrations, it could adapt to solve tasks that combine the precision and understanding, like in these examples. Here the robot can be seen removing the correct fruit from a bowl and solving a shape matching puzzle. And check this out, the more new tasks RoboCat learns, the better it gets at learning additional tasks, which to me 
sounds human-like. The more the human brain learns things, the easier it gets to learn even more things exponentially. So I'll just check this off as one more reason I think we are creating life. The initial version of RoboCat was successful just 36% of the time on previously unseen tasks after learning from 500 demos per task. But the latest version of RoboCat trained on a larger diversity of tasks, more than doubled the success rate on the same tasks. DeepMind says that RoboCat's ability to independently learn skills and rapidly self-improve, especially when applied to different robotic devices, will help pave the way toward a new generation of more helpful, general-purpose robotic agents. And I'm not arguing. Before we get into Barkor, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into Barkor. Barkor comes strictly from Google research, and it's an attempt to give quadruped robots animal-like agility. The robotics community has been striving to give robots human and animal-like agility not only for completing tasks more efficiently, but in order for these robots to move through complex environments with ease. The researchers at Google have been pursuing this task for ages, but there have been no benchmarks for robot agility or mobility in the AI community. And benchmarks are what drive development in machine learning. It gives researchers clear goals to strive towards. So the Google researchers developed the Barcor Agility Benchmark for quadruped robots, along with the transformer-based locomotion policy in their paper, Barcor Benchmarking Animal Level Agility with Quadruped Robots. What a mouthful. The benchmark is inspired by dog agility competitions, and any legged robot being tested must be able to display skills like jumping over obstacles within a time limit, moving in different directions, and traversing uneven terrain. Now, researchers can use the obstacle course to develop locomotion controllers while tying their performance to a real dog's performance. A small dog can usually complete the course in 10 seconds, while Google's robot does it in about 20 seconds. So how does the course work? The bar course scoring system uses a per obstacle and overall course target time that's framed around the agility of small dogs in the novice agility competitions. The object is for the robot to traverse all obstacles within 10 seconds without skipping, failing obstacles, or moving too slow. Here's the course. It consists of a set of poles for weaving through, an A-frame, a half meter broad jump, and then a step onto an end table. These obstacles were chosen because they forced the robot to show off a diverse skill set, and the course can be easily modified for different settings. To train the robot, researchers used parallel simulation to train a teacher robot and equip it with individual skills like walking and jumping. Next, they train a student robot on all the skills and transitions in between movements by having it learn from the previously trained teacher. Datasets are generated with recordings of the robot's movements for each specialized skill, which gives the robot plenty of examples to learn from. Then, they use a transformer-based model to group all of the skills into one overarching policy, which acts like a kind of neural network that allows the robot to move across various terrains. Now that the robot has all of the skills it's learned, or a locomotion transformer policy, it gets a navigation controller. This tells the robot where to go or how fast it needs to move based on its position. The train policy uses this controller, sensory information, and the robot's surroundings to control the robot. If the robot ever falls, a recovery policy is implemented that quickly allows the robot to get back on its feet. This is then followed by a walk back to start policy that allows for minimal human intervention. This histogram shows all the times the robot succeeded the course in blue. The benchmark has been established, and soon robots could be as agile as monkeys or cats. Combine this with RoboCat's new system and we have no reason to be nervous. It seems as though the world's AI leaders have niched down and it's quite interesting. So we have Google DeepMind in one corner, specializing in developing ways for robots to improve themselves. We have OpenAI in the other corner, quietly developing superintelligence. And we have Meta in yet another corner, innovating novel AI ideas and pushing the boundaries of open source models. It's really hard to tell what the future holds and in what direction technology companies will move in the future, but I guess I'm here for the ride. What do you think about RoboCat or Barkor? Let me know in the comments below. Click that video on the screen to see Google's Palm E robot. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.